women's champions across any other brands right now. Facts. And I think that I think that they are they, they put the titles on Boston Hub Connection just because they don't know how to tell the story between her and Sasha splitting without having something come between them because they haven't pulled the trigger just yet over the women's title. And if you see right now, there's no woman on SmackDown's roster that you can viably say um, should take the belt off Bailey. I thought they were going to do it to Mina. I thought they were going to pull the trigger there, but they're not. They should have. I, I but thought the, they were, uh, too. Yeah, I thought they were. But the, the cool thing about having the, the belts on Bailey and Sasha, I think they were the only champions that actually went down NXT and teased competing on that brand. And next Wednesday, we already have whoever is the champion is going to compete against Tegan, uh, Knox, and Shotzi Blackheart. You can already see tag teams being built in NXT from those two, uh, Caden Carter, and Casey Catanzaro, Dakota Kai, and Raquel Gonzalez. So I think NXT is going to start breeding more women's tag teams because they realize they got to start doing something with the belts. And I think they took also took the belts off of Bliss and Cross because they've been protecting Alexa Bliss from some time now. Like, she can work now, but I don't think she can work that type of schedule with all the bad injury history she has. Yeah, and I feel like, are those two going to turn on each other? Bliss and Cross? I don't think so. Like, is Bliss going to turn, or are they just going to fade out into obscurity? Bliss is a way better heel, but I just don't think she's at a place where she can actually work that main event yeah. schedule she had when she was champ. Mm. Yeah. And I think the Sasha Bailey thing is going to be a slow story. I mean, it's taking forever, but I think <laughs> they needed the title to help develop the story in WWE's mind. Um. But it's just going to take a while. I think that story is going to come in their fans and people can react and not during the, the quarantine time. So if they're just prolonging it even more by giving them the title. And, you know, crown a new NXT Women's Champion. And it feels like there's kind of a power vacuum because Raw's been kind of bowling with the women's division. Like, there's no excitement, no real threats. Like, they kind of tease, um, you know, you have a Bianca Barlett, uh, Bianca and um, Selena Vega. Like, it looked like they were going to have a good feud for a little bit. But they, I guess they're just more concerned with using Selena as a, you know, as a manager, which she's fantastic at. But it's almost like they're just wasting Bianca and only using... You know, the Street Profits, which is cool. I like what the Street, Pro- the Street Profits have been doing, you know, with the Viking Raiders, whatever they've changed their name of the group to now. So what do you guys <laughs> think about that? <laughs> well, I want to go back to Selena Vega because she's an excellent manager in that heel role. But I think Selena Vega is the heel champion that we all need. Facts. I think putting the title on Selena Vega would be the greatest heel champion better than Alexa Bliss. Like, she would kill it. Mm. So I'm just waiting for them to pull the trigger on that. But if it ever happens. Cedric, what do you think? So we're saying uh, you guys are interested in seeing Zelina Vega compete more. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. She's carrying okay. that stable. You said, you said instead of managing the stable? Yeah, she's carrying the stable. She's carrying Andrade... Um and oh boy, I'm forgetting the other guy who tears his pants off. But like, she's carrying them, and it would Adrian be great. Garza. Yeah, it'd be great if you could see a three way feud almost, like Charlotte feuding with Selena Vega, and then Andrade's there trying to break it up. Like well, that would that's be great. The thing. I, I'm- Andrade needs Zelina Vega because the mic skills are really there. Yeah. I don't know why they threw Garza in there. Just I, we know that um, Andrade had the wellness suspension, so they kind of had to fill time there. So they strip him of the belt. Um, Garza's a star, man. That's a Mexican stable. That's Eddie Guerrero reincarnated right there. He's a star. <laughs> Eventually, he's going to go on his own. I think the next few to make after this Lashley thing, you can probably make an argument for Andrade being in the main event scene, but I think he's getting some tough love now for all the uh, mishaps during his U S title reign. But Zelina Vega as a uh, competitor, I know she's been vocal about wanting to actually step in the ring a lot more. I can see it, but when I see Zelina and I see how small she is, I look at how they're doing Kyrie Sane, and I want to think of how they would make it work with some of these larger women. Cause you know, if, if, 
if Nia Jax and Zelina get in the ring, I feel like <laughs> Zelina would shoot back. <laughs> she would shoot back. Like she's not just gonna take a misplaced elbow or a damn near concussion. Like it's gonna be a fight. She's mm-hmm. scrappy. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And I kind of wish, like, that, yeah, we know that her and Alistair Black are a couple, like, I wish they, they I feel like there was a moment where they could have done something, but then they went and decided to pair, you know, her with Andrade, but. Now I don't want to see any more real life couples on screen, man. I, I'm, I'm anti that. I, I agree. I don't like real couples together on screen. Real Becky couples on screen Becky gave us Becky and Seth versus Baron Corbin and Lacey Evans for like seven Lacey months. Evans. I really tried to forget yeah, that, exactly. and y'all just reminded me, and now I'm mad. He <laughs> gave us that for like seven God. months. I'm I'm cool. Yeah, like, like, the furthest I'll go with that is what they're doing with Keith home. Lee and Mia Yim and Candice LeRae and Johnny Gargano. That's the furthest I'll go with that right now. And that was the best thing to probably happen to yeah. Candice LeRae because she definitely needed yes. a character facelift. And Saray is dope now as a heel. I, I never thought she had it. I thought she was like as vanilla as can be, but all it's working for her. All it takes is like some hair dye, some black lipstick, and, you know, <laughs> kicking, chomping <laughs> the balls. <laughs> oh, yeah. And now, since we're on chomping and kicking the balls, um, Killer Cross, because I'm not saying carrying Cross, that's stupid. Uh, <laughs> it's just dumb. Killer Cross. Coming from Impact, and it's funny how certain guys have like come from Impact, and yeah, that gets a bad rap. But like McIntyre re- rebounded his career there. Lashley rebounded his career. MVP rebounded his career there. All these guys, you can even say Jeff Hardy, or not really Jeff Hardy, but a lot of guys rebounded their careers in TNA slash Impact. And you see a guy like him come, and his last um, match with Eddie Edwards was fantastic. That storyline, you know his. I feel like his mystique is fantastic, like as a psycho. And now you see him in the main event picture when I th- honestly think Velveteen should have beat Adam Cole. I'm just going to go down uh, for the record books and say they should have put the belt on Velveteen. But, like, well, what's, what's y'all take on that whole situation? Because you got Dexter Loomis there. You got Adam Cole, undisputed for some reason, is still together. You know, Cross <laughs> is there. Scarlet Bird- Bordeaux's great, even though her and Liv kind of have the same, you know, shtick, but whatever. So what do we think about uh, Cross? Um, I I like the end of yesterday's NXT. I think that's a dope thing that they did with Scarlett. I think that's perfect visual storytelling. I think it's going to be a slow burn. I don't think he sees, I don't think Cole sees Cross at least for another three months. And yeah, they, I think they should have put the belt on Dream, but those untimely allegations did him in, man. Um, yeah. So now he's just in limbo. I don't know what he's going to do from here. I know he's going to be a part of NXT brand for the foreseeable future, but just bad timing with that. But I think they're going to slow burn Cross, just messing with mind games with Cole. And I don't know who you put in there to feud with him in the, in the meantime, unless you try like Finn. Rayvon? I mean, I just think, I mean, I agree that Velveteen should have took the title, so I'm really kind of over Adam Cole being the champion. I'm really against year-long title wins, so I think it's very boring and very stale. So I, I think he should have lost the title. They should have figured something out. But I didn't really know um, Cross and Impact or TNA or whatever, so I'm not really familiar with his work and what he can do, but I do like the character that he is in NXT and, and the whole ending of NXT was great, so I'm kind of excited to see where it goes with that, um, with that whole character and what happens with, next with him. So, you know, I've been appreciating this conversation you guys are having. You know, I just, I, I enjoy just listening to rest, about wrestling talk. It just makes me, me laugh. Like, I just enjoy it. But I'm just curious, you know, <laughs> Like, it's just entertaining to me, like, just even hearing people talk about it. Like, even when I lived at Ray Vaughn, like, we would always just talk about it, even if I wasn't watching it. It's just always an entertaining conversation because it really is, you know, entertainment mixed with sport. But with yeah. that, you know, obviously, you guys are black men, and, you know, it's not very often we have a 
podcast full of black men. And so I, I'm just curious, you know, for you guys, why why are you guys so passionate about wrestling? You know, what 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 did wrestling mean to you coming up? And you know, why have you maintained that passion and and that love for wrestling as adults? Let's we'll start with Ray Vaughn. Yeah, that's an interesting question. That is. Um, I mean, for me, like, I've been watching wrestling since before I can remember. Like, I don't know when it started, but it's all I know is <laughs> I've been watching it. But for me, it was a, a thing that I did with my mom and my brother. Like, we would all watch wrestling. Mm. And I I think that, you know, wrestling for me is, like, comfort. Mm. So that's why I think I continue to watch it. I mean, obviously, I, I'm still entertained by it and I still enjoy it. But I just think, for me, it's a comfort thing. And just seeing, especially, like, the differences that wrestling has evolved over the years since watching it, you know, in the 90s to to the late 90s to the early 2000s to now, it's just evolved so much and it's just so different. And so I think people, when they talk about wrestling, it's like, I don't watch it anymore because it's not like the Attitude Era. I'm like, yeah, but they couldn't do the Attitude Era, you know, yeah. forever. It's, it, wrestling goes in waves. I think for me, it's just to see the different waves and and how things change and the storylines. Like I always tell people who get so upset over storylines and things happening in wrestling, I'm like, it's a, it's a TV show, guys. Right? You can't get that upset about something. I know you want things to go your way, but it it can't always go your way, especially when there's fifty thousand people trying to have it go their way. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm just I like to watch it and still have the element of surprise as a kid to just enjoy the show and what's going on. Cedric? Yeah, I like that. I like what you said about the element of surprise, but I've been watching wrestling as far as, man, uh, maybe two or three years old, something like that. I mean, mm-hmm. I know I used to always do with my grandparents. We used to always order the pay-per-views, and my dad used to always order the pay-per-views for me and, like, my cousins, things like that. And I would even study the old tapes, like, when I, when I didn't watch. Obviously, I wasn't born... Uh, before 87, but I would watch all the old tapes back when they had uh, movie rental stores like Blockbuster and things like that. I would go to the movie stores and rent VHSs of the old Royal Rumbles and things like that and watch those. And it's just, like you guys said, it's just entertainment. Um, Storytelling, it's like my version of a soap opera, except it includes a lot of action and it's every single week. So I I consume a lot of wrestling. So I'm watching Raw, SmackDown, watching... W backstage, watch NXT, watch AEW. I probably consume at least 10 plus hours of wrestling every single week just because it's entertaining. So for me, it's kind of like, it's like going to the gym. It's kind of like an escape mm. where you get to watch something different than, and be invested into people's storylines, characters, things like that. And it is, it is a sport. And if you look at it like how it is now versus how it was in the 90s and the Attitude Era, it has become a global phenomenon. So all these media outlets that exist, like your CBS Sports, your um, NBCs, ESPNs, Fox, they all cover wrestling, which is way different than what it was when I was growing up. So it's more tapped in market than it's ever been because people know that it makes money. They know that it has a following. If you've ever been to like a live event or a WrestleMania or pay or anything like that, you know wrestling travels. They don't care where you go. These fans travel all over the world to see these people perform. And when you really think about it, like you have people who dedicate their life to this sport just to entertain people, which is crazy. They don't get paid like basketball athletes or NFL players or baseball players, but they're just doing it for the sole entertainment of fans. It's crazy. And Kenny, wrap it up. Yeah, for me, I've just always appreciated like the storytelling. Uh, obviously, you know, when you're a kid, you kind of have that suspension of disbelief. So, like, the attitude there. When it, for me, it was just like that was real, like that was so realistic. And I was like, I older and realized, oh, okay, this is a work. This is might be a shoot, whatever. You know, now I'm just kind of like, okay, it's entertainment. You know, I watch it, I see what they're doing. But mostly, it's like now I just really judge it based on like, was that logically a good decision to put the belt on this guy or this person, like. That that's where it's kind of come to for me. Like when I watch something, I'm like, "That's stupid. Um, you shouldn't have booked him that way." 
like how many talented guys have we seen in wrestling? Or like if they were booked a certain way, like imagine if Booker T beat Triple H. That's all I look at. It like if there were just some things that were changed, you know, some stigma.